Welcome to Season 5 of the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom, where we talk with enterprise and technology platform leaders about the people, processes, and platforms that make marketing and customer experience successful, scalable, and sustainable. This is what creates an Agile brand. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom, advisor and consultant for Fortune 1000 marketing and CX leaders and teams as principal and chief strategist at GK5A and best-selling author, keynote speaker, entrepreneur, and Agile certified coach. The Agile Brand Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full stack technology services, talent services, and real world application. For more information, go to teksystems.com. To sign up for the Agile Brand newsletter and get the latest insights and articles on marketing technology and CX, or to purchase a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, go to gregkillstrom.com. You can also find all my books on Amazon and other retailers. And now on to the show. Today, we're going to talk about the value of showing versus telling in order to improve the customer experience. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Ken Babcock, founder and CEO of Tango, a platform that allows users to create step-by-step tutorials of any process with an aim at increasing your company's CX. Ken, welcome to the show. Hey, Greg. Thanks for having me. Yeah, looking forward to talking about this with you. Uh, let's get started by, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about how you started your company? Because I think it's a, a unique story. Um, so you were you were at Harvard and decided to drop out and found the company. Um, can you talk a little bit about the factors at play and what made you decide to do that? So, you know, I, one, th- one caveat I'll add is we were at Harvard Business School, so not quite the, uh, the Mark Zuckerbergs <laughs> that dropped out of undergrad, but when we started working on Tango, it was, you know, call it January of 2020, which, you know, now is about three years ago. You know, we saw an opportunity there and, you know, we had some encouraging conversations with, with customers as we were developing our early ideas for the products. But a real catalyst for us was the pandemic. You know, obviously there's, it was just a terrible time for everybody, but the silver lining for us was that it actually accelerated a lot of our thinking. The customers that we had been talking to, um, went from, oh yeah, this, this sounds pretty cool. I'd love to try it when it's ready to, this would be amazing. Can you build it yesterday? You know, because they were experiencing the pain points of going remote, going distributed, knowledge sharing, just falling by the wayside. And, and I don't, I don't think it was something that, you know, the pandemic caused it, but that shift exposed a lot of the inefficiencies that organizations had. And so the three of us looked at each other and we were like, we have to go build this. Um, yeah. we spent the summer working on it and that's when we developed the conviction to say, you know what, we're actually not going to go finish our second year at HBS and we're going to do this full time. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So in preparing for this interview, um, I actually, I signed up for Tango and, you know, first of all, I, I wish it existed years and years ago <laughs> for what it's worth, but, um, I found it, you know, incredibly easy to use and, you know, the, I thought the the browser extension was not only I mean it it makes it for those that haven't used it you know it's it's it makes it easy to use and easy to kind of get started and and signed up and everything so you know from your perspective what were maybe you could talk a little bit about that and, and the thought process there but you know what were some of the factors such as that you know Chrome extension that led to having quick success with with Tango such as uh, you know some of the numbers that that I saw, you know, growing to over 50,000 customers since the company was founded just a short time ago. Yeah. And I, I'll, I'll give you a quick update. So, you know, now we're actually at 250,000. So, oh, geez. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's really accelerated. And I do think the Chrome extension element of it has played a huge role. So just for all the listeners, Tango allows you to, you know, create these step-by-step tutorials, how-to guides in the flow of work. And that's a key thing. You know, you can go through your process. We kind of sit in the background, take note of the actions that, that you make, take screenshots while you're doing it, but you don't, you don't experience that until the very end. So once you're done, you click done on the Chrome extension. And then the output is a, is a step-by-step how-to guide with screenshots. So it's, it's a really powerful, magical moment for that end user. Given that we're doing it that way, you know, from the get-go, we said, you know, we're we're basically, you know, acknowledging that there's so many tools and so much knowledge within organizations 
that needs to be captured. And there's so much nuance into how people use it. We didn't want to introduce a tool where we were like, hey, here's another thing that you have to learn. Here's another yeah. platform that you need to live out of. And so because we're a layer on top of so many other tools, the Chrome extension piece made a lot of sense. And then what you mentioned around getting started, that's something that we measure on a weekly basis. A couple of weeks ago was actually the metric that we measure for this is time from account creation to your first tango being created. Yeah. And um, a couple of weeks ago, it was like 4.8 minutes. So wow. Wow. that is something that our product teams, our engineering teams, we're always thinking about how do we get you as the user to feel that magic moment so you can then say exactly what you said, where has this been all my life <laughs> and start <laughs> right. you know, forming a habit. Yeah, yeah, I know. I uh, A friend and former coworker of mine often you know, ask me questions here and there. And, you know, when I have time, I'll, I try to write out a, a brief, like, okay, do this, do that, depending on what the platform is, you know, just kind of helping out here or there. And then, you know, we, I was prepping for this interview and I was like, oh, wow, I, let me try, you know, let me kill two birds with one stone. In other words, let me help my friend out and, um, and try this thing out before you and I chatted here. And yeah, just really, you know, really, and the, I have to say, this is not a sponsored episode or anything. So like, this is, this is genuine <laughs> testimony here. So, um, but yeah, you know, al along those lines of, of scaling and, and growth and, and everything like that, you know, how it's, I've, I've been part of startups before, you know, scaling is, is not easy, you know, to have such rapid growth and, you know, the, the 250,000 number you just mentioned, you know, how have you handled the scaling that must've been required with, you know, that, that level of growth? It's challenging. You know, we launched the product in September of 2021 and, you know, had amazing reception on Product Hunt, uh, which is where we launched. Yeah. You know, got 10,000 users in the first two weeks, which was, which is pretty awesome. But, you know, when you really think about today, it's only been 15 months and now we've got a user base of 250,000. You know, a lot of those users are paying users. We now have enterprise customers. And so when you're scaling, I think a lot of people tend to think about, okay, well, you know, are your systems going to be able to support that? You know, is your, is your backend infrastructure on the engineering side going to be able to handle all these users and not be glitchy and not churn people out because they experience a bug. But, you know, there's so much more, maybe even non-technical components to scaling. You know, what do you do about customer support? What do you do about customer success? Yeah. How do you prioritize the requests coming in? How do you handle billing, refunds? I mean, thankfully, there's a tool out there for everything to run your business these days, but there's a lot of stuff that we were confronted with where we said, oh, okay, we have to do this now. Yeah. You know, I think even even something like SOC 2 compliance, right? We saw a bunch of users come in and have a lot of questions and concerns around the screenshots that were being taken. And, you know, even though we were handling them in the best way possible and you know, ethically stood on, you know, kind of one side of the fence, they still wanted to see the proof point that that was the case, right? So there's a lot of things that come about in your journey when you scale so rapidly like that. Before we continue, I'd like to make sure you're aware of the upcoming CXPS 2023 conference, May 8 through 11, 2023 in Durham, North Carolina. CXPS is a great CX event focused on professional services firms that want to know how to take the next steps to make their firm successful in integrating client experience with their firm's strategic initiatives. To learn more and register for the conference, go to clientexperience.org slash CXPS dash conference. That's clientexperience.org slash CXPS dash conference. And you can register with the code AGILE200, that's A-G-I-L-E-200, for $200 off your tickets. You can hear from top professional services executives and CX thought leaders like myself through a combination of keynotes, breakout sessions, workshops, and panel discussions. Make sure to register at clientexperience.org slash CXPS dash conference with the code AGILE200 for $200 off your tickets. Now let's get back to the show. 
let's talk a little bit more about the the main subject I wanted to talk about, which is showing the value of showing versus um, telling and, you know, just how this helps the, the customer experience. So you touched on this a little bit as, as you were describing what the product does, but just to kind of go a little deeper here, you know, what was the main, you know, business problem or, or challenge that you identified that Tango really helps solve? It's going to sound really simple when I, when I talk about it now, but, you know, three years ago when we were sitting in an HBS classroom, it was actually during HBS's January term, they, they run a, a program called Startup Bootcamp. And um, that was really where we got our start. What we talked about a little bit, which became Tango, was, you know, every job that we had been in, you know, there's some component of shadowing. Yeah. You know, you, you come in, you start, you ramp up, you shadow. You usually shadow somebody who's just proximate to you. You sit behind them. You don't ask all the questions that you'd want to ask. They go at their own pace. You try to follow along, but you're swirling in a dictionary of terms you've never experienced before and a set of tools that you've never worked with. And so we just felt like that was that was extremely broken, but so many organizations rely on it. And so many organizations, if they don't do shadowing, they rely on almost like a, you know, we've heard people talk about onboarding binders. Yeah. And you can only imagine how many things in those binders are out of date just with the way business has changed today. So yeah. that was really the impetus for it. And so we thought a lot about not just the creator of knowledge, but also the consumer. So your point around showing versus telling, I think for us, our product development was largely informed by that consumer of knowledge. What do they want to experience? How do they want to process a task, yeah. you know, I think at the time also screen recording was becoming really popular. Things like Loom, Vidyard, Vimeo, Screencastify, all great products and have their, have their use cases. But when it comes to replicating process, they fell short because, you know, you had to, again, watch someone operate at their own speed, rewind, go back to a certain point in the video. You're often watching a lot of video and <laughs> scrolling to the right place. And so we are like, you know what, let's just go back to basics. Let's make our output be a step-by-step -step tutorial with screenshots. Yeah. And those screenshots can tell a lot about what someone needs to do and how they need to execute. The best part is the consumer can just follow along at their own pace. Yeah. Yeah. And I, um, personally, I, don't like video tutorials just for some, you kind of touched on some of the some of the reasons why but you know what I, what I found what I found powerful about using it was was that not only is there a list and I can scroll and read at my own pace and and find words and, and do whatever I need to but there is that visual component and not just like uh it feel it feels deeper than simply just taking one screenshot or two screenshots and, and things like that. So, you know, can you talk a little bit about, you know, yes, video has been around for a while and, and screen screen capture does has been used and is used a, a ton. But, you know, what's what's the power of visualizing this process along with maybe the interactivity of it is 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 something as well. Can you talk a little bit about that? A key, a key thing that we had to figure out, you know, we, we kind of call the Chrome extension, like our capture engine, you know, that's how we capture individuals workflows and turn it into the tutorial. Yeah. And so a key product development piece that was, that was really, really hard in the beginning was how granular do we want to be? When do we capture a screenshot? What is a step? And so to your point around, you know, Hey, this feels this feels more thorough than taking two screenshots and saying, you know, you got to start here and you got to end here and I'm not going to tell you anything you need to, in between. What we said was any event, a click, type, copy, paste, drag, drop, that's going to be a step for us. And the way that we were able to do that was um, by reading the DOM, which every computer has a DOM. It's basically like an activity log of, everything that's happening on your screen. And then when we tie those events to the actual page, we're reading the HTML and CSS on the page. And so that's why when you get into a Tango, you see, you know, hey, step two, clicked on, 
you know, the I'm feeling lucky button. And, you know, we know the action, but we also know kind of the button. And so I think that piece, you know, gives people the confidence that they're doing the right thing as opposed to uh, I have to connect the dots between like a start point and an end point, and I don't know how to get there. The level of granularity is something we've continued to refine over time, but we've done that working with customers and say, you know, does this give you everything that you need? Is there something, yeah. do you feel like there's something missing? Did you get tripped up? So that's how we've, we've tuned that. Yeah. And so, you know, this, this certainly, this has internal uses as you were describing. I mean, the onboarding process, it's, you know, it's, there's a lot to learn at, at most jobs as you're, as you're getting up to speed. It also seems like there's potential for external uses. So, so for end customers and, and things like that, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how, how do you look at ways that businesses can use things like tutorials or, or other kind of visual walkthroughs to improve that, that end customer experience? Our primary functions that adopt Tango, and I think this is very telling of, you know, kind of the question you're asking, customer success, customer support, sales enablement. And, you know, I think primarily what we're building for as a team is that internal training use case. But these teams have found ways to not only leverage that, but also, you know, this external training piece, you know, they, they maybe work at a software company or a product company and Tango actually helps them populate their help center or helps them articulate, you know, some of their support macros in a different way. And so we see people responding to their customers with Tango's on ad hoc tickets, but we also see Tango's populating their intercom page, for example. Yeah. And then similarly with sales enablement, like Tango's play a huge role in helping customers get onboarded in the implementation process and also just powering sales teams to have the right responses to, to a customer's question. So that external piece, even though it's not explicitly what we are building for, we see a high level of engagement with those teams because they look at it and they're like, oh, wow, this solves four things for me as opposed to, you know, maybe just one or two. Yeah. Yeah. Make, makes sense. How should businesses look at measurement, me, measuring the success of this? I mean, whether, whether it's an internal or an external use case, you know, what's, how, how should they look at this versus, you know, they might be thinking, okay, well, you know, we have a video up and it's there. And so if someone's really interested, they can look at it or, you know, or something like that. So, you know, how should they look at, how should they be looking at measuring the impact of that doing tutorials, walkthroughs, things like this well will actually impact the business? I think there's a few components, you know, the very, you know, sort of raw metric. And we've heard this from our users. We surveyed our users and a majority of them said that they save three or more hours a week using Tango. So that's, that's very tangible, you know, return on investment, but yeah. the bigger thing, and this has more of a longer tail impact is that, you know, we're, you're lowering the barrier to creating knowledge within your organization. You know, I think another thing we've surveyed our users about is, hey, of all the processes that exist within your company, how many are documented? Most people fell in this bucket of like less than 25%, you know, wow, and, that, yeah. and those processes are changing all the time too. And so, you know, for us, we think about it as if you're truly trying to drive operational excellence within your company, that means that the knowledge that your team possesses needs to keep up with the rate of change of the business. And you need to be constantly adapting that. I mean, most of my career I spent at Uber and for all the things, you know, that Uber was good at and all the things that they were bad at, one of the things that they were absolutely excellent at was documentation. You know, that playbook kept up with every new learning we had about operating Uber. And so that's where I think, you know, companies that are truly trying to be excellent that long tail impact of using something like Tango is that that knowledge and that process documentation keeps up with the rate of change of their business. Yeah. Yeah. To totally agree. And yeah, that, that 25% number does not surprise me <laughs> just having i I've seen it done. I've seen process documentation done really well, but 
um it's it's a rarity so yeah it's that um doesn't surprise me at all well um hey one one last question before we wrap up here as a fellow entrepreneur you it sounds like you you know the value of taking the right kind of risk i mean you know again deciding to start the company when you did and nobody can see the unknown of course but you know what's what's a piece of advice that you would have for those out there that you know maybe maybe they're thinking about they have a good idea of their own and trying to determine you know when their timing is right whether the timing is right to to start their own venture i definitely held myself back a little bit because i felt that i needed to accumulate as much experience as possible in different arenas to be able to be an entrepreneur because it was always kind of the end goal for me to start something on my own to build a team to build a product but i always felt like oh, i need to you know, maybe I need to go work at a company like this in this type of role to actually understand that. But I think the thing that, um, you know, people undervalue sometimes is that the entrepreneurial journey is very much a learning opportunity in and of itself. So yeah. now, now having gone through it and knowing how much we've just figured out on the fly by being curious, tapping into our network, encountering problems and taking them head on. You know, you don't need to wait for that perfect moment where you're like, ah, oh, I've got all the experience. Now I can go be an entrepreneur because inevitably you're going to have to figure stuff out along the way. So yeah. that would be my advice to folks is, you know, don't wait for that right moment because so much of this is also about timing. Yeah. Yeah. To totally agree. No, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Well, Ken, thanks so much for joining the show. For those listening, what's the best way for them to keep up with you and what you're doing with Tango? I think the easiest way is to go to our website, tango.us. There you can download the Chrome extension, get in touch with the team, learn a little bit more about how our customers are using Tango. So it's kind of your, your one-stop shop. Great, great. Well, again, I'd like to thank Ken Babcock, founder and CEO of Tango, for joining the show. You can learn more about Ken and Tango by following the links in the show notes on the podcast website. Thanks again for listening to the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom podcast brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www.gregkillstrom.com. That's G-R-E-G-K-I-H-L-S-T-R-O-M.com. To get a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, visit my website or you can find it on Amazon or other retailers. The Agile brand is produced by Missing Link, a Latina-owned, strategy-driven, creatively-fueled production co-op. From ideation to creation, they craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Until next time, stay agile.